Welcome back to Tesla Harmonics, Current Crusaders. I'm excited to have you here as we embark on a fascinating journey into the world of motor control symbols. Today I've prepared something special for you, an exclusive symbols test that's designed to challenge and deepen your understanding. Join me as we explore 50 common motor control symbols together. Throughout this session, we'll closely examine each symbol, unraveling its significance in the realm of industrial motor control. To enhance your learning experience, I've curated some resources for you. There's a sheet featuring all the symbols with their names, another sheet with just the symbols, and even an online test that you can take. And the links for all those are located in the description of this video. You can pause now and go ahead and look at those if you want to, or uh, print them out, bring them up on another sheet, maybe bring them up on another screen. If you want to do that right now and go ahead and look at those, you can have that where you can follow right along. Other than that, we're about to look at the symbols and we'll get into that right now. Okay, everyone, looking at our symbols that we have here, the first one is a normally closed push button. It is normally making contact unless I press it and it momentarily breaks contact. And when I release the button, it goes back to its normal state. Then we have a normally open push button that is not making contact normally unless I press it and it momentarily makes contact. And then I'll release it, it goes back to its normal open state. Then here we have an emergency stop button this emergency stop button is put in line with power going to the inputs or the outputs to, uh, to stop things when there's an emergency. And it's a definite state device. Meaning that when I, once I press it, it stays where it is until someone resets it. Then we have a normally open contact. Now this contact is going to be attached to something like a control relay, a motor starter. Uh, it could be built into the control relay or the motor starter, or it can be an auxiliary contact, meaning that it's been added to it. And we're gonna use the the, the normally open contact right here and the normally closed contact, we could use those to control lights. Like uh, in one of the first circuits we'll do after these symbols, we'll use this normally closed contact to show when our motor is not running. And we'll use a normally open contact with a green light to show when the motor is running. Then when we come down to the next one, we have a normally open limit switch. And then the next one is a normally closed limit switch. The first thing I want to do when looking at limit switches is I want to distinguish where is this operator at in its normal position. If in its normal position, if it is hanging below the circle on the right, that is a normally open limit switch. If it is sitting on top of the circle on the right, that is a normally closed limit switch. And I say that so if we look at the next one, this one is below the circles, but it's pushed up touching the circle that means that this started off as a normally open limit switch where something is holding it in place so we would say this one is a normally open held closed limit switch we got six is a normally open limit switch seven is a normally closed limit switch eight is a normally open held closed limit switch nine is the symbol for ground ten is a symbol for a half horsepower fractional motor uh, 20 would be a quarter horsepower fractional motor. Come back up here to number 11, our limit switch. 11 is, is above the circles, so it started off as a normally closed, but it's being held off the circles. That would make this one a normally closed, held open limit switch. Now those rules only apply to the limit switches when we look at them like that. We want to remember that if we look at a normal limit switch, and it is hanging below the circles, that is a normally open. If it is sitting on top of the circle or the contact, then it's a normally closed. And it can be, it can be held closed or held open. A good example for this one is a, a light switch for a refrigerator. When you close the door, it holds the switch open. And when you open the door, the switch closes and turns the lights off. Number 12 is a normally open foot switch. Number 13 is a normally closed foot switch. Number 14 is a normally open pressure switch. Number 15 is a normally closed pressure switch. And with all, with all of those, the first thing I look at, other than the limit switches, are, are they making contact to, through circles or are they not? That starts them off with, is this normally closed or is this normally open? And then what is it? Like with this one, we said normally open pressure switch. Then we got a normally closed pressure switch. A normally open float switch, F-L-O-A-T. A normally closed float switch. A normally open temperature switch. A 
three phase disconnect. Then we have a normally closed temperature switch, a normally open flow switch, a normally closed flow switch. Then we come to a time contact. When we look at the contacts and they have these arrows on them, that means that that's going to be a time contact. And the, the, the contact is going to, to time the direction that the arrow is pointing. So if I look at this one right here, this is a normally open contact and it's going to time the one up. I mean, it's going to time the close. This would be a normally open time close contact. Our next one, when we look at this one, this is closed and it's going to, to time to open. This would be a normally closed timed open contact. On this one, it is open with the arrow pointing down. That means that it is a normally open timed open contact. The next one is closed with the arrow pointing down. That means it is a normally closed time closed contact. Then we have a symbol for a thermal overload, a symbol for a battery, and a symbol for an open switch. Next, we have a solenoid. Then we have a symbol for a motor coil. We have a symbol for a generic coil. We have a symbol for a control relay coil. And we have a symbol for a timing relay coil. The next thing is a red indicator light, a green indicator light, and a yellow indicator light. When we come to our next one, we see a limit switch that is sitting on top of the circle. So that means that it is a normally, normally closed limit switch. And when we draw this diamond around something, it means that it's going to be a solid state or an electronic device, meaning that it won't have moving parts like a normal mechanical limit switch. So right here, I have a, a solid state, normally closed limit switch. Then I have a, a closed switch. Up here I have a fuse, which is a overcurrent protective device. And then I have a control transformer. This control transformer is used to, uh, to take the voltage coming in for the motor, to step it down to a control voltage for all of our control parts. Then we have a circuit breaker symbol. Then I have a red indicator light with an extra hot on there. This is a red push to test indicator light, a yellow push to test indicator light, and a green push to test indicator light. The next symbol that I have is a handoff auto or a selector switch symbol. Then we have a horn or a buzzer symbol. Normally open limit switch that has a diamond drawn around it. That would be a normally open solid state limit switch. And then we have a coil with a diamond around it. That would be a solid state coil. Okay, everyone, that was it for the symbols. Now let's uh, go look at the test that you can take and uh, talk about where we go from here.